the acid ionization constant or the equilibrium constant for acids, the Ka. So the Ka is same thing we've been using previously. Uh, it's the concentration of the products over the reactants at equilibrium. Uh, we started talking about a weak acid. So that weak acid, HA, could be anything. Could be acetic acid, could be HF, could be benzoic acid, formic acid, citric acid, lactic acid, vitamin C ascorbic acid. Okay. Anybody else? Any, any other mentions for weak acids you want to shout out? Any shout outs to other weak acids? Acetic. I think I said that. It's okay, double shout out. All right, but anyways, we just usually write that as HA or HA. Uh. Huh. See, you're catching on. All right. And that uh, donates a proton to water, making that hydronium and whatever the anion is, A minus. So it's hydronium times the a concentration of the anion all over the uh, protonated acid, HA. Now let's think about what this could tell us about the strength of the acid. Okay, so if you're looking at a weak acid, all right, and we say it's a pretty strong weak acid versus a pretty weak weak acid, okay, what do you think that means? The stronger the acid, do you think we're making more hydronium or less hydronium? The weaker one. Okay. So if we have a stronger acid, the stronger the acid is, do you think we're making more hydronium or less hydronium? Okay, let's go back to a strong acid like nitric acid. Nitric acid is a strong acid. So strong is about as strong as you get. Strong is strong, 100% ionization. And it makes all hydronium, H3O plus, 100% hydronium. So it actually turns out when we're talking about acid strength, the more hydronium you make, the more products you make, the, more, the stronger the acid is. That's what we would say. The more products you make, the stronger the acid is, all right? And that will eventually lead to, uh, you know, given uh, equal concentrations, a lower pH. So the lower the, the stronger the acid, the more hydronium, the lower the pH. Because of the, all the H plus ions. Right? Yes, because all the H plus or hydronium ions that it produces. Okay. So then what's that mean for our Ka? If we make the more H3O plus we make, what's that going to do to our Ka? Is that going to make it bigger or smaller? Bigger. bigger. So the more products we have, the bigger the Ka. So those two things lead us or give us information about how strong the acid is. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we can say the stronger the acid is, one, the more H3O plus it makes. We could have also said that it's a higher percentage ionization. The higher, higher percentage of ionization, the more is 3O plus or more H plus it makes. So the higher the percentage of ionization. And, and that, well, the higher the percentage ionization means the more ions we make, the more H3O plus and the A minus we'll make. The acid. The higher the ionization, the acid will have. No, it's okay. That's good clarification. And that last point, so we'll say three over here because I ran, a room, ran out of room over there. It's okay. Three, that means the higher the Ka, the larger the Ka. Okay, so as you're reading this, you're like, okay, the stronger the acid, the more H0 plus, okay, got it, got it. The higher the percentage of ionization, okay, got it, got it, and that's it. Nope, you gotta go over here. See, I'll lead you there. Three. 
you don't miss it. You don't want to miss it. So the bigger the Ka, the stronger the acid is. That's what you could say. The bigger the Ka, the stronger the acid. All right, so let's look at a list of acids, of weak acids. So these are acid ionization constants for some monoprotic weak acids at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. So um, here, here's acetic acid in the middle of the table. Okay. But let's just look at general what's going on. So here, chlorous acid. And it's probably hard for you to see, but uh, that's 1.1 times 10 to negative 2. Then 4.6 times 10 to negative 4, negative 4, negative 4, negative 5, 10 to the negative 5, 10 to the negative 8, 10 to the negative 10, 10 to the negative 10. What's going on with the uh, strength of the acid? So the Ka is going down as we go down this table. So what's going on with the acid strength? Weaker. They're getting weaker. So the acids are getting weaker as we go down or stronger as we get up go up this table, okay? So that's something we could say, so acid strength is increasing. Strength is increasing. And we should even write that down. That's a, um, what I said previously. The bigger the Ka, the stronger the acid. This point is especially uh, highlighted, and maybe we could highlight it, for the last, that's not the highlighter, there's the highlighter, for the last um, uh, species on this list, okay? So this uh, acid down at the bottom has a K of 1.3 times 10 to negative tenth. So it's 1.3 times 10 to negative tenth, is that a big number or a small number? That's a small number. It's so small that we don't even call this molecule an acid. We just call it phenol. Okay, so that's just an alcohol. So it does ionize a small amount in aqueous solution. Um, <coughs> it probably has limited solubility in aqueous solution, although I'm not 100% sure. But it's so weak of an acid, we don't even call it an acid. We call it an alcohol. All right. All right. So... Here's uh, just a little bit of a, I guess, review and more uh, examples of what leads to something being an acid and also what determines its strength, whether it's a weak acid, whether it's a strong acid, or if it's a weak acid, is it a really weak acid or a really strong acid, okay? So the first uh, thing we talked about was electronegativity, okay? So uh, HClO4, that's perchloric acid, uh, that hydrogen is bonded to one, two, three, four oxygens, then a chlorine. Five very electronegative atoms. All right? And so that bond between hydrogen and oxygen is really weak. And so it is a strong acid. And apparently I'm in still in highlighting mode. Okay? Yes because it's bonded to five very electronegative atoms that are pulling for those electrons, weakening that bond. Yes? The weaker the bond, the stronger the acid. The weaker the bond, the stronger the acid. That's a good little saying. Maybe we can even write that down once I click pen. Okay. All right, so look at the next one. This is chloric acid, HClO3. Hydrogen's bonded to one, two, three, four. Electronegative atoms, um, and it's an acid, but it's a weaker acid. And now it actually has a Ka, right? That indicates that it's a weak acid. Notice that we didn't even have a number for perchloric acid, the first example. It's just strong. Why don't you have a number for there? 
Well, if you think about it, okay, the Ka, just like any K, is products over reactants. If the acid is strong, it's boom, 100% ionization, all products, no molecules, right? And so the reactant's concentration would be zero. And so can you divide by zero? Nope, your calculator starts yelling at you. Siri makes fun of you. Have you ever asked Siri to make uh, to divide zero by zero? Do that if you have an iPhone. I don't have an iPhone, I'm not cool enough. But she makes fun of you. All right. All right, so chloric acid is a weak acid, but a Ka of one, so that's pretty strong. Remove another oxygen, now we're down to chloris acid. All right, so now it's only bonded to three oxygens, or two oxygens and chlorine, three electronegative atoms. That's Ka of 1.1 times 10 negative two. Ka drops, that means it's a weaker acid. Okay, and then uh, hypochlorous acid, HOCl, suddenly it's down to 2.9 times 10 negative eight. And so the removal of those electronegative atoms is causing less pull for those electrons, effectively strengthening that bond, causing it to be a weaker and weaker acid. Okay. So this was a strong acid, and apparently I'm in yellow now. I didn't want to be in yellow. Okay. <coughs> so we should write down that uh, saying Edward said. The weaker the bond, the stronger the acid. Yeah, the bond between the hydrogen and the, the uh, atoms. All right. All right, and then here, up here, the top uh, table is just telling you about, about bond energy. The stronger um, uh, the bond, the higher the bond energy. And so you can just see that HF has a pretty high bond strength, 565. That's uh, fairly good for, uh, you know, a potential acid. And so that because of that bond strength, again, because of the good overall overlap, that turns it into a weak acid. All of the other halogens, or they call them halic acids, because they're all the halogens, binary acids with uh, halogens, are strong because they're electronegative and poor orbital overlap because of the much bigger p orbitals that start with chlorine. Then, if you uh, try to compare apples to apples, like the number of uh, atoms, so just hydrogen bonded to two electronegative atoms, which causes the um, stronger acid or weaker acid. It all depends on the electronegativity of the individual atoms. Okay? So now we've got hydrogen bonded to oxygen, so all of them are going to be 1s2p orbital overlap, so everything's equal there in terms of the bond strength. And so then it's all about which is the more electronegative group. And chlorine, uh, because of the electronegative trend going up towards fluorine, chlorine is the most electronegative atom out of these three. Bromine's the middle, iodine's the least. And so that leads to HOCl being the strongest acid because chlorine's the most electronegative. All right. Then here's the trend over here in this uh, purplish table or figure, whatever you want to call it. Um, not too, I don't think, too important, but uh, the acid strength goes increases. You go left to right because of electronegativity increases. And acid strength increases. You go down because of poor bond strength because of the lower, poor overlap of orbitals. 